I didn't think about the Nobel. I didn't know that there are Nobel prizes when I was uh, when I was thirty years old. Honestly, I didn't even know that. I was just. Uh, I can tell you what, how I got. I I got famous early on, and I got famous because I studied my hemoglobin, because I was in sports. And I, uh, I was running short of oxygen uptake. That was limiting my performance. Uh, so I wanted to know how this could be understood and possibly improved. And all my research uh, before I was 30 years old was related to redox reactions mm -hmm. with oxygen and to studying my own blood. And, and studying my own blood just made me a famous scientist. If you don't enjoy what you are doing, it's not worth it. Uh, okay. Because if you enjoy, you can also fail, and it is still worthwhile. Uh, if you don't enjoy it and you fail, it's a catastrophe. Proteins are the class of biological macromolecules in our body which perform essentially all the functions. I mean, breathing goes through proteins, digestion goes through proteins, mm -hmm. transport of materials in the body goes through proteins. And you can only understand why proteins can perform so many different functions mm -hmm. if you know the three-dimensional structure. Right. It, it's as simple as that. Yeah. And so uh, getting three-dimensional structures of proteins has been a very focus of uh, modern biological research. Now, in protein science, it is so that since I got the Nobel Prize, about 130,000 new three-dimensional protein structures have been determined. So that we now have a, a very uh, useful uh, database to, for example, discuss drug development and uh, also to get insight into the nature of certain diseases, of, of uh, metabolic uh, events in health, and so on and so forth. It, you, it is important to realize that there has been nothing in 1962, because the country was down from the war. And in about 1980, mm -hmm. there was no basic research mm -hmm. in Korea. Mm -hmm. That's 35 <coughs> years ago. There was no equipment, there was no support. Mm -hmm. And it started in the 1980s with individuals, not on a general level. Mm -hmm. Most of your universities had no research mm -hmm. in the 1980s. This came later, this came 20 years from now only. Mm -hmm. And in 20 years, you cannot build up uh, the necessary, uh, what should I, now how should I express this? You see, you don't have a tradition. Mm -hmm. You are not networked worldwide mm -hmm. because it's too young. You are, most of all, you are not prepared to evaluate uh -huh. uh, the results of basic research. You have no means. Uh, too much was and is still going on in Korean language, uh -huh. which makes it impossible for individuals, scientists abroad, to help. Uh -huh. You see, as long as, <coughs> as long as things are not written in English, uh, there is no way that evaluations can be done from outside. Mm -hmm. uh, that 
Korean students get their bachelor's degree, they have a heavy burnout. Uh, uh, I agree. Yes. And then when they get to graduate school, uh, many of them just are incapable to adopt. You see, I mean, you, you put your kids to kindergarten. Uh -huh. If they are not very good in kindergarten, you hire a teacher to, to prepare them so that they can get into a good elementary school. If they are not very good, you hire another teacher to teach them until midnight, five days a week, uh -huh. so that they would excel in primary school and make it into secondary school. And in this way, uh, you, you just level off and everybody gets to the same level. Those who are gifted and those who are less gifted, mm -hmm. because you push them by tutoring. Mm -hmm. And most of the kids are under heavy pressure all the time. Mm -hmm. this, and uh, grow up as happy human beings. <laughs> And then be ready to ready to work hard mm -hmm. when they get into advanced studies.